Hello everyone, welcome to 2021. Here we are in Cyberpunk 2077's Afterlife Club celebrating our journey into the future. Um, it's better be a VIP table. Oh, it, yeah, it, it is. It's a booth. Ask. It's a booth. It's a little, bit, a, booth. a little bit smoky in here. I thought they'd have kicked out smoking, but maybe there's cyber cigs or something. I don't it's know. vaping, Ian. Mm. Oh, know? vaping. Mm. Oh, cyber yeah. vapes, of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's quite nice. Table service if we want it. So it's well, okay. of course we want it. Who doesn't want table service in a <laughs> no, club? No, not, not for on. me. Thanks. I'll, I'll walk all the way to the bar. Uh, in, God, in, get in your crush. steps in in the future, you know. It's true. Well, you know, it's now that it is the future mm -hmm. it's 2021 and the absolute nightmare that was 2020 is hopefully over and done with please let the curse Bye. of 2020 be broken i'm done we with that thanks not <laughs> invested <laughs> in that being a thing again no 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 I, no more for me cheers uh what games what games do we have to look forward to actually i think would you guys agree 2020 in terms of games was surprisingly good yeah it was good but i don't feel like a lot of big ones came out does that but make you say sense? that, but like there was The Last of Us 2, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, Resident Evil 3, uh, like Cyberpunk came mm. out. Oh my god, um, I completely forgot Final Fantasy <laughs> and Resi with this right? year. It was Fucking the longest hell. year. The year lasted yeah. a decade, let's be honest. You know? I don't think anyone can be blamed for forgetting what the hell happened in this. Animal Crossing New Horizons. You Animal know? Crossing! Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, yeah, as you all have watched by now, my Game of the Year vid was Animal Crossing, so uh, yeah. I should have yeah. really gone to that. <laughs> but um, yeah, and Hades came out as well, which I mean, my game of lot, yeah, exactly. Like mm -hmm. loads of good stuff came out. Yeah. It's just, I think as we we're waiting for the next gen to kick in, it, we it was felt a bit of treading like, water. Exactly, yeah, completely. But now we're in 2021, Woo next gen is here. Yes. So, I know. Stuff to look forward to. Yay. Well, what are you looking forward to? Wow. I'll kick this ball right off the cliff. Go for oh, we it. All can, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> we, I think we can all guess what Zoe's looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> Horizon Forbidden West. Robot can you, do you surprised? Are you stunned? Not at all. No. no. Well, what needs to happen in her? Because I don't. I've played a little bit of Horizon Zero Dawn, and I have to say I keep bouncing off it. I'm not really sure why. But like, what as, as a huge fan um, as you are of the first one, what does the second one need to have to I think be amazing? So in Horizon Zero Dawn, you could choose between whether you answered like um, dialogue choices is like either really tough or compassionate or logical and mm. what I'd love to see in the next game is not only those choices make a return but also it may actually make a difference for stuff okay. because in the game it felt like that was just kind of flavour you could add to your Aloy rather than having any lasting impact um, but also like just more things to do with the robots you could tame them which was really cool but once you tamed a robot that was kind of it you didn't get to like tell it where to go you didn't get to like get it to target an enemy or something it just kind of waited and sat around until the enemy came within its view and then attacked it like something oh. where you can actually control the robots you hack into would be absolutely amazing um but i think from the trailer that we've seen we've already had quite a few hints about what's going to come like i think there's going to be underwater sections because aloy now has a rebreather so i think we're going to be doing some underwater exploration um i'm really hoping that we get um like I think what Horizon Zero Dawn did really well was exploring the ruins of the old world and make that world come to life. So I'd love something where like maybe we got to see what it was like back in that time and when everything mm. went to crap. Like I don't know, a flashback or something, but that would be amazing. Robo flashbacks. And if you had to choose like one robo animal that wasn't in the first one to appear in this one, Panda. What would it be? A dog. Dog. I, there weren't any. There weren't any robo dogs at all. No, no, there, no. there was. There was a, like a wolf-like robot, a really yeah. big one, um, called the not the scavenger. It was called the something like that. Uh, yeah. I guess I know how Resident Evil on really well. It's been a while. Um, but yeah, there was like a big wolf one near the end of the game. But what I'd love is like a more domesticated dog robot that's kind of more a companion than like yeah. an aggressive thing. Oh, that'd be cool. I think yeah. that'd be really cool because then you could have like your own. Robot companion who you can just, you know, go that'd around be the world so cute. and stuff. I think that'd be really good. Um, but yeah, more like investigation of the cauldrons and like what is happening with Silens and Hades. Um, because don't listen to me if you play the rest of the game, but I think Silens is going to be the bad guy in the next <gasps> game. Uh, Interesting. But, yeah. I've got a lot of thoughts about the game, a lot of thoughts, and I'm very we excited couldn't for tell. Us to hear more about it. We couldn't it. tell. It's, I've been very yeah. discreet about it, to be fair. <laughs> How about you, Aoife? What's one of your things you're looking forward to in 2021? Well, I think 
I mean, I, I guess I have to say Resident Evil Village. However, I do have my reservations about it also. I'm a little bit nervous Your about it. Your reservations? Re oh. <laughs> yeah. It's always a good one when those two wince. It's always a good one where there's just <laughs> silence and no actual, like, it's just, words uh, after that. It's just uh, a recoil no and done. It's stopping me even in 2021. Sorry. No. Carry on. If anything, Sorry. you're more powerful. <laughs> but I guess, like, I... I I like that Resident Evil is like I like the Capcom still after however many years it's been still tries new things however Resident Evil Village after how great and how much I enjoyed Resident Evil 7 um, and the remix like it seems like a step backwards because for years and years when they were doing uh, not 4, 4 was great but 4 was a turning point and then after that it became more survival shooter rather than survival horror kind of mm. or, or you know shooter horror rather than yeah. survival horror like I loved that it was returning back to you know old creepy mansions inventory management you know like a lack of ammo you had to actually puzzle solve and use your, use your head but like there's something about village and granted we don't know a lot about it it just seems like it has it's going back to that bombast that it mm. had before and also like witches and werewolves and stuff i cannot see how that is going to fit a resi mold like i just i just really hope they're not going to go back to shit the glowing glowing orange weak point for massive damage you, you know <laughs> yeah. that would be the worst thing mm. they could do after it and i don't know why they would yeah, it felt like they went back to kind of the, the big action sequences towards the end of Resident Evil 7, but you're right, yeah. the like tension they kind of created in the in the first three quarters of the game was absolutely amazing though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um what what do you think is gonna be the biggest risk with the next uh, with village then? You think it's the witches and werewolves thing or is it I the do village think, setting? Yeah. I think it's kind of the introduction of those more sort of supernatural elements. Like I I think that horror is you know, well, the Resi's kind of horror is is more successful when it's a bit more explainable in the sense that you know it's if it's 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 more human based, like it's the cause it's caused by human tragedy or whatnot. And werewolves, I'm just like, mm. I just know <laughs> if they went down that road, it'd be like, oh, we've got the new W virus <laughs> yeah. being created in the yeah. lab, and you know, there's no. There's no good story behind that. It's just we inject them with this, and now they're werewolves. Like that is that's all the story that you're gonna get out of that. Yeah. And I find yeah. that really dull. Like I have not played Resi Seven, but I was really interested in it because I watched some playthroughs of it because I'm too scared to play it myself. <laughs> but what I really liked about it was how rooted it was in the Bakers as a family. Yes, like yeah. the virus was obviously like a big deal and stuff. Yeah. But it was more about them as characters rather than they're big monsters and they mm. walk around. You've said it much better than I could that like, yeah, it's there's horror in seeing a once loving family being turned into these like grotesque beings. Absolutely. There's not a lot of horror in, oh, it's a creepy sect of witches in this village and wah, 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 wah. Yeah. you know, like it's just yeah. it's pantomime villains yeah. rather than something that is genuinely unsettling and unnerving mm. and fills you with dread. Yeah. Like, that's what I want in a horror game. Another thing that made it so scary was the fact that it was took place in quite an enclosed space, just basically the Baker mm, Mansion mm -hmm. for a lot of it. And then with the um, village, you get this kind of camera shot in the trailer going over the entire village and there's a big mansion. And, you know, as soon yeah, as there's a lot yeah. of space and stuff, it starts getting, losing that claustrophobic terror that you got from yeah. being hunted by Jack Baker through the like mm. tiny walls. And what little we've seen of it so far, it seems like, so you're playing as Ethan again mm. from Resident Evil 7, and he's teaming up um, begrudgingly with Chris Redfield. Beefy and, Chris. Uh, oh my God, like he's just reached his final form, like he's yeah. ginormous. And I worry that that is gonna, that is, they're pushing it in real action-y kind of, because the good thing about 7 was it went back to that sort of feeling of, you're a character who is out of their element, you know, kind of like yeah. Claire, Claire Redfield was. Um, in the in the beginning as well and I, I like having a character that is struggling to make sense of what's around them rather than a trained tactical individual who's yeah. like pew, pew. although jill valentine doesn't count but like, <laughs> but you know what i mean so yeah and saying all that i'm i'm obviously gonna play and i'm intrigued to see what they do because you know they've done like capcom is on like it, they were on such a bad streak for so long with all these weird spin-offs and you know crappy little sh action shooters that n like multiplayer things that nobody wanted and then 
Then they had like the Resident Evil 2 remake, which was phenomenal. They had the Resident Evil 3 remake, which it was also good, if bloody short. Mm -hmm. um, and Resident Evil 7. So I'm just like, I'm not going to judge anything before I see it. I'm just a little bit worried about it. Oh, that's fair yeah. enough. Completely mm. fair. Yeah. What about you, Ian? What are you uh, looking at for well. 2021? I only have to wait 18 days for my first uh, my first what? one. Yeah, 18 days coming out on the 20th of January, just in time Ooh. for my birthday, which is the 27th <coughs> Christmas oh, card, cards it? and okay. presents. <laughs> uh, it's Hitman 3. Yes, um, can't wait for some more Hitman action. Uh, loved the uh, episodic Hitman's. Uh, is that that soon? That out. Hitman yeah. 3, really? Mm, wow. Yeah, That's yeah. really soon. Obviously, like I love the world building they do with hitman and how detailed and intricate the levels are on this one we're gonna go so far uh dubai and dartmoor uh, and i think somewhere in china <laughs> dubai via dartmoor. Been, dartmoor. yeah <laughs> um yeah some kind of big big posh mansion or manor in dartmoor i think um, oh that what, actually sounds yeah. really fun kind of like on the moors yeah like the trailer kind of played it out to be like some kind of murder mystery kind of clue yes. kind of style thing that would be awesome. very uh, yeah. into that so um that you know exploring those wonderful um locations that io make is going to be super cool i can't wait to throw it to one more oh my god around if there isn't things. a homing briefcase we riot yeah Do you know they what, have though? to like, put it in it feels like IO really deserve so many kudos though, because like the Hitman games have been so, so well made and conceived mm. and designed. Like they are just great little self-contained worlds, aren't yeah. they? Every single level. Yeah, every so time you go in, something different happens. You make your own story and wacky stuff you don't plan plays out. And um, you know, I'm gonna be able to do all of that in VR as well. Because yeah, yeah the PlayStation VR um, version is that a game out. changer for you? Being able to actually kill people right in front of you in VR and like an IO level, no <laughs> Just sound, like because they put so much attention to detail in their levels. Um, what I the things that really bring VR to life for me when I play VR games is little details, fingerprints on glass, uh, a little crisp packet on the side, something that makes the world feel lived in. You play a cheap yeah. VR game, yeah. which is just you know a square for a room. Yeah. You're not that. You're not that you know immersed. You feel immersed. But yeah, yeah, you walk past the window and you catch the glimpse of a handprint, like just as the light catches it. You're like, someone's been there. Someone's touched that. I feel like I'm in that place. And That's Hitman's really cool. yeah, Hitman's details have all of that. Um, in the levels like a huge magnitude of that kind of detail so um yeah exploring those levels uh standing close to people that i'm about to murder and listening yeah. in or or blending in and doing <laughs> tasks and like are you gonna be clues. okay with garroting someone in vr because that 100 pretty intense experience yeah 100 percent easy it'll be water off a <laughs> no duck's baller. back for me no <laughs> no do you baller. think it's uh do you think it's going to come up against half-life alex in terms of like the oh, most yeah. detailed vr game i don't think uh, like in terms of graphics wise i don't think it'll be up there with alex because only the playstation 4 version is going to be playable um in psvr you'll be able to play it on playstation 5 backwards compatible with the uh, oh, the okay. adapter okay. But um, PlayStation VR doesn't really exist on PlayStation 5 yet, and whether it will do or not is unseen. Uh, you know, no one knows apart from Sony at the moment. Mm. So graphically, um, compared to the base flat game, Hitman 3 will be a, in VR will be quite downgraded, and it, you know it won't look as stunning as Half-Life Alex does on a on a, on a um, you know high-powered PC. But mm. there's still going to be loads of detail there, and once. You once a few little details start tricking your mind that you're really mm -hmm. in there. It doesn't matter how low res the graphics are; um, it's still going to be a, an cool. utterly believable experience, I think. So yeah, That's can't yeah. wait for that one. 18 days. 18, 18 days. days. So close. Nice. Amazing. All right, Zoe. What's your other game that you're looking forward to? Well, I don't think this is confirmed to come out in 2021 yet, oh. but mm. I am hoping that God of War Ragnarok comes out. Yeah. Uh, maybe at the end in the holiday season because it's wintery, maybe. Oh, makes sense. Uh, but yeah, the sequel to God of War I think was a no-brainer. Like They teased it at the end of the game with Thor appearing. Um, it is definitely 
going to be in the works, but I'm yeah. really excited to see what they'll do with it because God of War to me is one of my all time favorite games. Mm. Um, I think it not only did the action fantastically well, like the feeling of throwing your yeah. axe was so kinetic and like palpable, but the relationship between Kratos and Atreus was beautiful as well so well written as mm. well as Boulder and uh, Freya and stuff so I'm really excited to see kind of how they're going to continue Kratos and Atreus's relationship in God of War Ragnarok and also show the impacts of the stuff you did in the game yeah. in God of War because it, it feels like Kratos is Kratos has always been the kind of person who he's kind of been on his own because mm -hmm. Calliope and his wife he killed them in the past he's never really had anyone oops yeah that's <laughs> you can find out at the beginning You'd, you know you never really he's never had, really had anyone apart from Pandora in that one game to look after but with Atreus right. he now actively has someone that he needs to kind of protect and he care and he, you know he loves again and stuff but that and dynamic's going to be different now because Atreus doesn't need protecting you know exactly he Atreus 100% knows that he can kind of handle himself and mm. I think he's just awakening to the fact that he is actually pretty fucking powerful as mm -hmm. a boy but the thing is like is there gonna be boy. I think it's gonna start literally where God of War ended because yeah surely you can't have a time jump after Thor fucking you know like yeah. appears in front of you mm -hmm. um, yeah but I'm just I love the fact that the first game dealt with kind of like the smaller players in the Norse mythology it didn't yes. go straight in with Thor and uh, Odin and everyone so I I I'm interested to see how God of War Ragnarok will maybe not even top but just match God of War as the first game. Um, I think there's a yeah. lot of this stuff coming. I and think they're gonna... Oh, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Well, and I feel like that I think from what I've heard they've had quite a lot of queer writers so that makes me mm. wonder maybe there'll be some kind of queer representation in the writing for the game mm. uh, would which would also be fucking great. I'd love that. Yeah. I just yeah I guess that's true like I was uh, at first I was thinking oh well you know he must have to have a new weapon and what what else how are they gonna like handle you know the mechanics of them play like traversing together and how are they gonna make that different but actually the real question is I think because the story in that game was just as important if not more so than the gameplay element absolutely how how are they going to evolve their relationship and create conflict in that relationship and make it a believable and interesting story uh, what what are, what are they going to do with it you know where are they going to take it i mean there's so many ways they could take it yeah but to I stay think, true to those characters you know exactly i think kratos is far from a good dad even at mm -hmm. the end of the game i think he's still mm -hmm. got a very long way to go but what i'd love is to see kind of more of atreus come out because we know kratos fairly well as a character but atreus i feel like there's so many untread paths in his like character arcs and stuff that mm. would be absolutely amazing to see so yeah god of war ragnarok very excited for that. would you say a 2021 release date would be a sight for thor eyes oh. <laughs> i need to walk that off okay. yeah just but, i have no i have no response to that on. <laughs> oh Sorry, can we get another round of drinks over here? Really, God really God damn, needed, we please. need them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess, like, I haven't really, I've, I've only picked a, a few games um, to really sort of get the ball rolling in 2021. And also because I like to be surprised. I mean, I think you, like, I think you could say that a lot of the most popular games of 2020 were games that we never saw coming. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think like the landscape of the of 2021 is really going to affect what games end up becoming popular. Like I love that, you know, in 2020, while we were in lockdown, it was a lot of multiplayer games that got us through tough times because it, everyone was looking for that social connection. And I hope that continues. But also, I think I'm looking forward to more narrative driven games Absolutely. again. Like I really, really love Tell Me Why in 2020. I thought it was a brilliant uh, use of the mechanics. Um, uh, like the Don't Nod had worked on in previous games. And on a similar vein, I'm really looking forward to uh, Lord of the Rings Gollum because oh, yes. it's a narrative driven game uh, considering characters that we all know super, super well, stories that we all also know super well. But I hope that, and it sounds like, they're going to be exploring facets to Gollum slash, um, oh my god, Schmiegel. Schmiegel. Schmiegel that, that haven't really been touched on. Uh, very much outside of the book. Yeah. Um, Gollum looks... is such a tragic character as well. Like Gollum, Smeagol, yeah. whatever you want to call them. They're so like torn and like just there's just the glimpses you get of them both in the books and in the movies, the two dimensions they have to them. There's so much for them to draw on for the game. 
Um, yeah. It's kind of stealth gameplay, isn't it? Like sneaking around and such. It's sneak sneaking around and stuff. I think it's like they're playing with the duality um, of uh, of Smeagol slash Gollum um, and and sort of that that rift that is within him um, as the character kind of progresses down this really dark path. So there's going to be like different narrative choices where you can lean into. Um, their their Gollum side or their uh, the Smeagol side of, of his personality um, and yeah there is going to be stealth and it, the really cool thing is although we haven't really seen very much at all from the game um, it seems like they're drawing on sources outside of the films as well so right. we can uh, look forward to you know just just it exploring things that we maybe haven't seen before yeah I really hope that it's not a case of like Smeagol good, Gollum bad. Like, yeah. it would be so simplistic. It would be really good if Gollum was, like, he's obviously not... A murderer, yeah. Yeah, he's obviously a murderer and a bad, morally corrupt person. But it would be yeah. cool if Gollum was also maybe the more pragmatic side, like the one that realises you can't always save everyone, whereas Smeagol, yeah. like, obviously has strength and his emotional strength is empathy, but maybe might be a bit naive and like... And can be taken advantage of yeah. and yeah. I've yeah, always felt sure. that, that Gollum needs to exist not only because the ring has corrupted him because it needs to protect Smeagol somehow. Like there's yeah. that kind of relationship between them. But yeah, absolutely. It's going to be an yeah. interesting one for sure. That's it. Mm -hmm. So Ian, what is your final choice? My final choice is, of course, Far Cry 6. Yes! Um, of course, I'm the world's biggest Far Cry fan, maybe, allegedly. I don't know if that's true. But I am a big Far Cry fan. They can't, pro they can't prove they you can't, yet. You, you can't say that. No, don't give us receipts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I cannot wait for another open world um, exploded thon. Um, this time, it's uh, set in uh, a Caribbean island called Yara. Um, mm -hmm. And um, it's, which is basically, it's inspired by Cuba. So mm -hmm. um, there's going to be like, kind of like the Cuban, um, like 1960s Americana kind of feel, awesome. you know, with the old nice. cars and things like that. But also huge um, uh, rioting and stuff going on because uh, El Presidente, the guy in charge, um, Anton Castillo, I think, who's played by, I'm going to try and get this right, Giancarlo Esposito. Yes, um, the legend. The legend. He is amazing. Who, whenever he shows up in any kind of TV show, you know that something bad is about to happen. <laughs> yes, I absolutely. He, I can't think of a time he's played a good character. Uh, like a goodie. He's always no. like oh. rocks up and it's like, oh, crap. So what do you think about the... Uh, I know you've done a whole video about it for the channel, mm. but... Do you think it could be Vars as his son? No, no, okay. I don't know. Straight now. up, no. Uh, no, I d so uh, Michael Mando did a tweet going, like, uh, or an Instagram post going, oh, Vars may be back. And that set the rumor mill into overdrive. Oh, and people no. thought that Diego, um, the son was of Vass, the Presidente, yeah. was a young Vars, maybe. Uh, but then they announced a Far Cry 3 VR game, which is only playable in like event spaces where mm -hmm. you play um, in an instance of Far Cry 3 and Vars is in that. Okay. So I think maybe they just had to, you know, Ubisoft had to license Michael Mando's image uh, for this VR uh, game or something. Okay. Michael Mando was like, oh, you might see me again, because it hadn't been announced. So I don't think it, there may be a couple of vast Easter eggs, maybe. Someone might mention him in passing, yeah. like they did with the Jackal in, in Far Cry 5. But um, no, I don't think he's going to be um, a character in it now. So like Far Cry games are pretty much, they have been pretty much consistently like there's very similar mechanics for a mm. long time now. Are you kind of happy? Like, cause I think like Far Cry fans are happy for that to continue. Would you want to see any new mechanics introduced in this? Or are you kind of just like, this is what I want. I want a big playground to run around in, mm -hmm. to do my outposts, to do my slides and my, and my arrow kills and yeah. That's that, basically, that's, yeah, much... that's like, you know, that's like my version of the movie you always put on in, at Christmas mm. time. I just like a big open world, silly stuff going on, things I can explode with arrows, loads of little Easter eggs and bits to find off the map and stuff. I'm just quite happy just, you know, vegging out in my comfies, playing a game like that. I, lo I love, I, I really love them. And I like, um, as long as they keep the outpost things, I really like yeah. stealthily taking mm. out outposts, you know, like going around the perimeter Super satisfying. Uh, yeah scanning I was about out to say like going in. one of my favorite things to do in Far Cry 5 when I used to play it was just like pull it on and just like a couple of hours just do outposts like it was mm. so yeah. 
not like therapeutic, but it was just so like. It kind of is though. It's it, like, yeah. you know. The gameplay just, loop is so enticing. It's just it so is. nice to be like, done, tick, right, stealth this one, mm. tick. Like it felt really good. Yeah. Yeah. I used Spark to be a huge it. fan of the multiplayers, but they've been pretty lackluster in the last like no. three. So I'm not bothered about that now. Just a story mm. for me. Well, let's look forward to in 2021. Mm. I know. Not like, the least us playing really... all of these games. Yeah. I'm so excited. And you know what? Like there's going to be, I'm sure there's going to be lots of things that we can't even, we don't even see coming right now that are either going to be like, you know, I like, I really like that nowadays that there's more of a precedent for like surprise, like releases yes. and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know, or like little indie titles just bang and they're there. And then like, there's just a whole zeitgeist around them. Yeah. I, those are the things Absolutely. that really excite me. I feel like 2021 does kind of have a need for some new IPs and I cannot mm -hmm. wait to see what they'll be. Mm. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, you know, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because we have a new video every day. Yeah. And that's, yeah, what, that's, that's a whole lot of videos. 63 days left in this year, and they're all going to have oh, yeah. videos. That's a lot of videos. Some of them are going to be about the games we mentioned today. Definitely. So we will see you again. Well, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> we sure will. Do we, when do Should we, we get, get another to round sleep? of drinks before we go? <laughs> yeah, please. I'd like yeah. at least two shots. Thank you very much after this okay. part. <laughs> yeah. We'll get so. on that. <laughs> Bye. Bye. More base, more base, more base. <laughs>